Greetings to everyone. Today we are going to talk about the war which is ahead of us, and we can name it seduced by the war game of fallen angels. The prince of this world is the devil. Why did God allow this to happen? When God created the world, he gave man authority over the earth. Satan deceived Adam and brought him under his power. Thus the authority over the earth passed from Adam's hand to Satan. Through deception, Lucifer separated man from his faithfulness to God and therefore from God's protection. Satan, as an evil master, took away man's authority over the earth and dominated the human race, making them his slaves and slaves of sin. God Father sent his Son Jesus Christ to become a man in order to do for man what no other man could do, for that is to break the yoke of slavery in which Satan has put us and to give us freedom and independence again. After the victory on the cross, Jesus was given all authority in heaven and on earth. Only if we are in Christ, the victorious man, and the second Adam, by his power in us, we will have freedom from our sinful nature and freedom from Lucifer's power. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with his might by his power in the inner man. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. However, despite all of the above, the only true ruler to whom everyone submits is God and our Heavenly Father, who has absolute authority over everything that exists. Because of the free will he gave to people, God allowed them to follow the enemy to an extent which neither people nor fallen angels can cross. When the angels cross the line of God's forbearing, he sends them to bottomless pit, which is kind of a solitary confinement for the angels. He says about it in the book of Revelation, chapter 20. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and the Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loose a little season. Let us remember an event from the scriptures. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep or the solitary confinement, it is the prison for demons. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Fallen angels cannot even possess animals unless the Lord allows them. For this reason the scripture says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils believe and tremble because they know the glorious power of the one who can do all, and as well as their end. In this world all who are not born again of God will inevitably find themselves under the control of the enemy. God is slowly but surely bringing the history of this world to its end. Due to sinfulness of people and their unwillingness to repent and receive the new life that only Jesus gives, the world is bewitched and deceived by the deceitful gain that the fallen angels provide them. That gain we can name in several ways. One of them is like a game of a good and a bad policeman. 
where both serve the same satanic system, or a game of creating an order out of chaos where the same party first creates chaos to make people seek for peace and then that same party offers a solution where deceived majority wholeheartedly accept the great show without even realizing it. Then the game of the great battle of deep state against the sovereignists or the battle of multipolar order against the unipolar where again we get the new world order only with a different name. Or even more interesting is the game of battle between open Satanists and unbiblical or apostate Christianity, where at some point many will be delighted that Christianity has supposedly won, when in fact it's just Satan disguised in the order to deceive us. Lucifer enjoys it most when apostate Christians persecute true Christians. That is the culmination of his deception. Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father, nor me. Out of his grace and unsurpassed love, God gave us the prophetic books of Daniel and Revelation, in which the final events of earth history are shown. That is why we should not go to astrologers, false prophets, nor mediums, because the scripture says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. When prophetic books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience, which will move them and lead to the greatest revival and manifestation of God's power, followed by the latter reign. Persons who walk with Christ and who are the temple of Christ's Spirit will bring from the books of Daniel and Revelation truth that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. They will start into action forces that cannot be repressed. The earth will shine with the glory of God, and honest children of God will day and night study these books of God with delight. Satan enjoys war, for it awakens the lowest human passions, such as rage and hatred. So people who are deep in vice and sin go to death without having time to repent. So Satan drugs them into eternal death and steals their salvation. War also reduces the human population and makes it easier for Satan to establish control over people. Through his followers, Lucifer is pushing the world into the Third World War and wants to immerse ourselves in this great war performance, choosing a place on one of his warring sides. What is the goal and the result that should be achieved at the end of this war? The war serves to divide the world into ten world regions, or empires, and to reduce the human population for easier management and control. Let's look at the numbers of some of the ten world empires which are to be built and where should the most war conflicts in the near future happen in the coming four years. Let's pay attention to the numbers. 1. Great Israel, 2. Europe, 4. Russia, 5. Arabia, 8. China and India. These empires whose borders have not yet been divided and which should be practically defined through bloodshed in the coming period. What will this organized war performance by the fallen angels look like? The scriptures say that when the war in the Middle East spreads, Europe and America 
will be on one side and Russia and China on the other. And we read about it in Daniel 11.44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. The American invasion will be hindered by the tidings of Russia from the north and China from the east. Let's look at what is written in the newspapers even back from 2008 and thank God who has been keeping this war conflict from starting before its time, which Lucifer would fervently want. Iranian president sparks anger as he predicts Israel will soon disappear off the map. June 2008 Russia threatens to target U.S. allies if Trump exits treaty. U.S. openly threatens Russia with war. We will erase Israel from the map. China preparing for war with U.S. expert warns. World War III precedes Armageddon. It will not cross to Armageddon just because of God's intervention. When the Apostle John wrote the Revelation, he saw the terrible scenes that would take place as signs of Christ's second coming. He saw armies arrayed for battle and men filled with fear. Although America will go forth with great wrath to kill and destroy many, yet that destruction will be restrained. God will stop the war conflict. At that time, when the work of salvation is nearing its end, warring judgments will come upon the earth and the nations will make war, but they will be restrained as not to prevent the completion of God's work in the world. Then the papacy storms the stage with its last deception for which the entire war game was prepared. The Pope has a solution for the world. Thus, before the eyes of the world, order is created out of chaos. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. The verse says that the temple will be built for him in Jerusalem, and there he will meet his end. The tabernacle of the congregation was God's temple in the wilderness. He shall come to his end and none shall help him. The stone which represents the second coming of Christ will destroy the Antichrist. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. During the false peace between 2027 and 2030, he will destroy many. He shall also stand up against the Prince of Princes. He shall stand up against Christ in a way that he will abolish his intermediary service in heaven and establish his service of beast and her image. But he shall be broken with our hand. Second coming of Christ will destroy him with no effect of the human power or hand. In Second Thessalonians 2.8 we read, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. More about it he says in Revelation chapter 13. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The last pope will take up the sword, and that is the weapon, and issue a death decree upon the people of God. However, he himself will be killed by the sword of Christ at his second coming. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. 
And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And this is the fifth eternal kingdom of Christ. The Third World War is an uh, intro to the world's greatest deception and its aim to create great fear in people so that they are open to any solution that will offer peace and security in exchange for war and total uncertainty. Are you looking forward to soon living in one of Lucifer's ten regions under total control and no human freedom under false Christ? and twisted Christian values that will closely resemble the real ones? Uh, what Putin and Trump as members of so secret societies can tell us about Christian values? Can we guess whose Christian values will they be? Again, the revelation of God, chapter 17 points, the mother church and the city on, on seven hills, Rome, which has dominion over the kingdoms of the earth. Biden, as president of the USA, is portrayed as a globalist and promoter of the deep state and many dark plans that lead to subjugation of the world. A very bad world's policeman. On the other hand, we have Putin, who is a sovereignist and supposedly a, a fighter against globalism and its dictatorship, who wants to create a new free world with Christian values. He is a good world policeman who needs to restore order. And let's read some statements from one of Putin's speeches about Christian values. We see that many Euro-Atlantic states have taken the way where they deny or reject their own roots, including their Christian roots, which form the basis of Western civilization. In these countries, the moral basis and any traditional identity are being denied. National, religious, cultural and even gender identities are being denied or relativized. Their politics treats a family with many children as equal to a homosexual partnership. Faith in God is equal to faith in Satan. Christian holidays are celebrations and celebrations are abolished and neutrally renamed as if one were ashamed of those Christian holidays. With this method one hides away the deeper moral value of these celebrations. Trump as an opposition to Biden is also against globalism and NATO while he supports US sovereignty. He often speaks bad of Biden, comparing him to Putin, who is allegedly determined, forward-looking, knowing what he wants, while Biden is slow, indecisive and senile. During his inauguration, Trump was portrayed as a good policeman who is fighting to restore Christian values to the US system and to supposedly empty the filthy pit of pedophilia and Satanism that has taken deep root in American society. Trump proclaims a Sunday for a national day of prayer for the victims of hurricane. However, they all together partake in the great game of the fallen angels, which they lead against God of heaven and earth, in order to deceive everyone and pull them in the service of Lucifer and under his false order. What if at the end of the war game, Satan offers us exactly what a carnal Christian dreams and expects, which is a false thousand-year kingdom of peace on earth where Protestants, Catholics, Orthodox, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Confucians will realize their tendencies and dreams of earthly peace and prosperity in one of these ten realms. Many questionable holy men and women write and speak of it more often and by doing so pushing the world right into the hands of Lucifer. On the promoting coin of this order it is written New World Order and Ten World Regions and Eighth is 666. What does the Bible say about it? It is very interesting they mention the Eighth, who is of the Seven, which can be only found in the Holy Scriptures. 
and the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour, fifteen days, with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. This is the coin on which Lucifer depicted his intention to divide the world into ten world regions. And the Pope that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. We see this is a quote from the scriptures. The eighth goes into perdition, and he is to be a ruler over the entire world. At the bottom of the silver coin says, Post change eight is six six six. It is interesting that talk of the eight and he can be only found in the Bible. How do they know about this? So the post change eight is the six six six, which means post change John Paul the second is six hundred and sixty six or God upon earth. He as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. And what does it mean post-change? He was ruling, then he is not, and he will come back again to power post the change. It is very interesting that the creators of the New World Order also talk about the eighth Pope from Revelation, and happily take photos next to his statue, while Christians are in ignorance and speculate about who could the Antichrist be, where he could come from, and if and when he was born on this earth. Having such an ignorance beside the books of Daniel and Revelation is astounding and worrying. Probably many who call themselves Christians expect the promoters of the New World Order to show them who the Antichrist is and to eliminate him because he is very bad, so they can worship and praise the real Antichrist in peace, of whom the scriptures speak of. New World Order is the world divided into ten regions under the power of John Paul II. This is what the scriptures tell us, and also it must be personally announced by Lucifer, the enemy of God and men, for the Lord God commanded it. If the devil wants to imitate God, then like the Lord he must make all his plans public, for he won't be allowed to perform any of them unless he first makes it public. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thus we have before us a double testimony from the scriptures, what the Lord declares and what Satan declares in his deceitful way. If many understood what is written in the scriptures, they would deeply bow down to the Creator who graciously revealed it to people. The war will happen and it will end, as stated in the scriptures. However, are we going to be delighted by the arrival of the Russian Emperor who will bring peace and salvation from Satan's deep state? and who will unite the orthodox countries and create a great orthodox empire with allegedly Christian values? And what if the king is one of the ten toes from Daniel's prophecy of the statue that will support Satan's earthly kingdom which opposes Christ? Can any earthly king save us from the power of fallen angels and the power of sin? Or does it belong to Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords? In Revelation it says that all ten worldly kings will give authority to Antichrist and will war against Christ. And let's read about it. And the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour, fifteen days prophetically, with the Pope, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the Pope. Pope is going to be the supreme ruler, then he says. These shall make war with the Lamb, and Lamb is Jesus, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for it is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And this verse clearly says who is going to make war with and who will conquer.
Ten kingdoms or ten economic political regions were proposed by the Club of Rome and accepted by the United Nations. The official name for these ten regions in the Club of Rome and in the United Nations is the Ten Kingdoms. At the right coin, region number one is the Great Israel, with its capital of the world, Jerusalem. From there, Satan wants to control the world from earthly Solomon's temple by the Pope in order to defy Christ. Where is the King of Kings? Jesus Christ and God's kingdom of glory in this entire story of the ten earthly kings of which our Father Prayer speaks about. Ten kings will joyfully war against true Christ but will wholeheartedly worship Lucifer who will imitate Christ. I am come in my Father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name him ye will receive. And this verse will very soon reach its complete fulfillment. Jesus said that his kingdom is not of this world, for if it was, his servants would defend him, as the unconverted Peter did at one point when he drew his knife to defend Jesus. All these earthly and human solutions to distract us from the greatest truth and blessed hope the manifestation of God's glory and the second coming of Jesus Christ. We are saddened when we see prophecies spoken by supposedly holy men go in the opposite direction of what the Lord said. The essential question is whether we will more obey God or men. Lately, more often people are appearing who have experienced clinical death and declare opposite of what the Lord said to whom we will listen, whether them who are deceived by the enemy or God who is holy, righteous, good and truthful. May our choice be, but as of me and my house we will serve the Lord. The statue from the book of Daniel tells us that there will be four world earthly kingdoms and that the fifth kingdom is Christ. We focus our looks too much at the ten toes and are amused by the game whether one of the toes will be a great orthodox empire or another, depending on religion where we belong to in which we will achieve some of our earthly goals. And how will the new world order together with its ten kings end? And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, that ye may eat the flesh of the presidents, and the flesh of the captains, and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of generals, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, uh, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. And as shown on the silver coin, will now give a biblical interpretation of everything shown. <clears throat> the ten kings of the world regions and the last eight pope will end up in the fire of the judgment day, which is shown at the bottom of the coin by the burning fire, while those who are faithful to God and are persecuted by them away the morning of eternity and immortality as shown above on the coin. We will cite verses from Bible that confirm this. It is for an encouragement of God. But the day of the Lord will come, which is a day of wrath, day of judgment, seven plagues, as a thief in the night, and in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The first time was flood, now will be fire. For behold, the day cometh, that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all 
and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with a healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. The earth will be uninhabited for a long thousand years. There will not be a single sinner on it to continue its work of destruction and rebellion against the rule of heaven. The saved will be taken up. A cloud with Christ, after a seven-day journey, will arrive to the third heaven and spend a millennium in heavenly Jerusalem. Satan and all the fallen angels will be bound and thrown into the abyss, which is a dungeon for demons, because the earth needs to rest for these thousand years from all the six thousand years of destruction and torture of sin. There will be none of the false earthly millennium of peace which is going to be proclaimed during the short time of peace between the warning judgments and the punishing judgments or the seven plagues. Because the Lord said so. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, the judgment day, day of rough seven plagues, so cometh as a thief in the night. But upon who is coming? Upon those who say, Peace and safety, because they don't expect it. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. In times of full peace, people will rejoice and worship fallen angels who will appear in the form of dead relatives, apostles, prophets, Mary, and as the climax of the deception, the false Christ, too. They will fall on their faces before Lucifer, who will imitate Christ, and say that this is the earthly millennium of peace that they have been waiting for so long. The false millennial peace is great deception, which opens the way for the coming of the devil as Christ who will, with his irresistible lies, bring the world to the judgment day. The scripture is clear. There is no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. People cannot live in sin and disobey God's holy law, trampling even just one of the God's ten commandments, and hope for the blessings from heaven. The Bible clearly hints the judgment unto the unrepentant. While many look at the toes of the statue of Daniel, which describes the end of earthly history, mesmerized by what is happening on earth, they do not see that the storm comes from above and hits the very toes that many live for and direct all their hope in that direction. Jesus tells us, Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. This is what Jesus tells us because our eyes are too focused on what is on earth. In Bible it says that our living is upon heavens from whence we expect our Saviour. And where do we expect Him from? After spending the millennium in the third heaven, the saved will come back to this world in heavenly Jerusalem together with Christ during His third coming. That city which come from God out of heaven will be the capital of the new earth. May the Lord make and do that this home shall be yours and mine soon that day. I wish you warm greetings to everyone. May God bless you and I shall see you again at the next fellowship.